morning. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, just to let you know what we're about to do is, uh, for those of you who've been here before, you know what's about to happen. For those of you who are new, welcome to our Palm Sunday service where we are celebrating Jesus' triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem. That's why you all have a palm. We're going to begin out here singing. You're going to hear a little a prayer. There'll be a reading. And then once we get inside, there'll be a dramatic reading of uh, the events of the week of the Passion from uh, Palm Sunday all the way to Good Friday. So without further ado, let me pray and then we'll hand over to Chris. Father, as we meet in your name, we ask that you would uh, speak to our hearts. Prepare us, Lord, for the events of the week leading up to Easter, that we may discover the love that you have for us in greater riches. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Who's in heaven and glory in the highest. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs us and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them on their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these palm branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to process in. So you will all follow us behind the cross.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Please remain standing as we continue our songs of praise.
God, we thank you for the wonder of who you are and that you came to save us and that we can join with those who have gone before us shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we remember how you came into Jerusalem knowing what the end of the story would be. And as we remember, we also remember that you are coming. And we have this wonderful gift of joining with the saints and the angels and those who have gone before us, those who are beside us, those who will come behind us, joining in the praise of your name, the name above every name, the name that is holy, that is good, that is saving, that has saved, that is saving, and that will save. Join us. <laughs> with your saints and your angels now as we proclaim your praise and the worthiness of your name. Would you sing with me, worthy? Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song it's on heaven's mercy seat sing holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come with all creation i see
Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood, who his love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise, he will never be forgotten. Eternal days On the mount of crucifixion Fountains open deep and wide Through the floodgates of God's mercy Flowed a vast and gracious tide grace and love like mighty rivers poured in sent from above heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed a guilty world in love let us all Thy love accepting, love the ever all our days, and let us seek thy kingdom only, and our lives be to thy praise. He alone shall be our glory, nothing in the world we see. Has cleansed and sanctified us. He himself has set us free. Sing this last verse. In thy truth, he does direct me by thy spirit through thy word and thy grace, my I trust in thee, my Lord. Oh, thy fullness thou art pouring, thy great love and power on me. Without measure, full and boundless, as I yield myself. Lord, in this time as we sit in your presence and um, as we are about to hear a story that is so familiar to many of us, um, I pray that we could hear it anew, that we could experience anew um, your love without measure. And Lord, as we hear this story, that we could watch watch you in the way that you move through these events um, with purpose, with intention, knowing uh, that you were going to the cross, knowing that you were going to go through death and come out the other side, all for our sake, all for our salvation. So Lord, we pray for new eyes and new ears to experience uh, the depth of your love for us. And we pray, Lord, um, for today and for this holy week that it would be a time of depth, uh, a time of refreshing, knowing, Lord, that you are for us. We ask this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord is here. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Um, as you can already tell, uh, today's a little bit different, and we're about to have a dramatic reading of the Passion story. Um, so just as a heads up, uh, there will be some loud noises and some shouting. Uh, and since this is a family service, just want to give you a uh, fair warning about that. And we also do have activity bags for the kids in the back if you uh, haven't been able to get one of those yet. So as we enter into the Passion, uh, let's just soak it all in. Let's begin. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed him, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and when they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will be true. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will be true. The Son of Man goes as, as it is written for him. But woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one to not have been Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, We'll all become deserters because of you. I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die for you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little far farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, and not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, 
you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one that I kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send more than twelve legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come with swords and clubs to arrest, arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter, following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is this that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, You don't know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Or the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all of the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring him, bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, 
It is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are blood men. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who was called to the side? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. I have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of the dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas! Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourself. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us! 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 So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put a charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, 
Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for, them, for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, he's been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Well, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Together. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. That was quite something, wasn't it? Let me offer you three thoughts and take us back to the, where we began, which was on the steps with palms, um, and as the children noticed, some palms are greater than others. Uh, but that, that, well done, Hollis. You've, uh, that was great. Um, 
What do we learn about Jesus in the events of Palm Sunday that lead to Good Friday uh, and to Easter Sunday? The first thing is, who here plays Minecraft? Right, hands up, okay. When you play Minecraft, the details are important, right? Don't mine at night. Be careful, don't mine past the bedrock, all that kind of stuff. Here we see, in a similar way, Jesus cares about the details. Just like any one of you parents who works with an Excel spreadsheet or something similar, the details matter. Um, why do they matter? How do we know that they matter? Well, if you, in your bulletin, go to the very beginning, page one, and we see here that Jesus says to the disciples, as they neared Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say, the Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. In this story, the small details have incredible meaning and incredible importance. So the details matter. And if the details mattered here, they, the details of our lives also matter to Jesus. The second thing is that none of this was a surprise. None of what happened on Palm Sunday and Easter week was a surprise. Why? It was prophesied in the Old Testament. God had spoken to people hundreds of years be <clears throat> before the event, 500 years prior even, through the prophet Zechariah, that the Jewish people would have their king ride into the city on a donkey. Now, I have no idea, I have a fairly certain idea of what will happen in the next five minutes. But what will happen this afternoon? Well, we have plans, but will it go according to plan? I don't know. But God does. And not only does he know what will happen, he cares about the details. And he loves us so much that he planned out this week that we're about to mark just for us. Now, who plays soccer? Who plays soccer? Okay, parents of, of, of those who go to soccer games, what do we know? We know that there will be at least a one, if not two, snow cone trucks at all <laughs> soccer games. And so what do we do? We prepare our children. Children, there will be snow cone trucks at the soccer game, and we will not be having snow cones after the soccer game. It's not going to happen. You can prepare a day in advance, that morning, minutes before, and the inevitable happens. Can we have a snow cone, right? We know what's going to happen. And if it's true in that small a scale, imagine things from God's perspective. He knew what was going to happen, and he did it specifically for a reason. What's the third point? Jesus doesn't always do the expected. Everyone, those who do, had read the Old Testament were expecting that their king would come in on a donkey and they expected the king to do things in a certain way. But Jesus came in on a donkey to show that, <clears throat> pardon me, he wasn't just going to be a king, he was going to be a servant. And in order to serve, he had to do things in a way that people didn't expect. They wanted their king to come in in power, to get rid of the bad guys, and to set up the perfect place for them to live in. But Jesus saw the problem was deeper, and that the people needed a servant to come to fix the problem that they all face. And the heart of our problem is the human heart. And so Jesus comes in, yes, on a donkey, yes, as the promised king, but he comes to serve us all by coming in to die. 
And so as you go through this week, you may come to one of our, our many opportunities. We have Maundy Thursday at 6.30, 6.30? 6.30. Um, we'll fact check that. We don't want to give you any fake news. Uh, six o'clock. Don't come. Well, you can come at 630. You'll just miss the first half hour. At 6 p.m. is our Maundy Thursday service, which really we focus in on those events of the night before Jesus died. And then Good Friday begins at noon, which is more of, uh, there will be a children's program for Good Friday. There will be an adult program in here where we think about the events that happened uh, leading up to his death, and then Easter Sunday here at 9 a.m. As you go through this week, families, single people, young people, every one of us, here are the three things to take away, especially in light of all that happens in the span of a week. God cares about the detail. Nothing surprises him. And he's made plans that even before we know that we have a problem, he begins a solution. And he doesn't always act as we would expect, but he has come to serve us. And our response when he serves is really one of the heart, which is to worship, to thank him. So in a moment, we're gonna come to the Lord's table where we're going to, partake in Holy Communion, which is the meal that he uh, set forth for us to do on the night before he was betrayed. And as you come forward to receive the bread and the wine, his promise to all of us is that he would meet us at the table. And so if you have details in your life that need the help of one who is not surprised but has come to serve, then come with those needs in mind and receive from him. Jesus loves us, and he has come to serve us. Amen? Let me pray. Lord, on this Palm Sunday, we lift you our lives. We lift you all that's happening in our community, in our world, in our families. And we thank you that you are the God who cares about the details. You are the God who's never surprised and has a plan. And that even though you don't always Act as we expect. You have come to serve us. And we thank you and ask that you would help us and lead us through this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand? May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another a sign of God's peace. Please be seated. Welcome again to St. Bart's. Um, Holy Week has begun. We are definitely off to the races. As Dave mentioned, we have multiple services this week. Maundy Thursday, uh, you can see in your bulletin, starts at 6 p.m. Um, on Thursday night. There will be uh, child care from birth to five years old. Uh, we would love it if you could register for that just so we know uh, what to expect. As Dave said, that is the night where we remember 
when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, and we will also uh, have a foot washing service as part of that time. Good Friday here at noon, there'll be a program for the children, and then we will do in here uh, meditations on the 14 stations of the cross. There'll be art throughout uh, the sanctuary, and there'll be songs and meditations for each of the stations. Uh, it's, it's a very powerful service. If you can, make sure that you're at that one. And then, of course, Easter Sunday um, here, 9 a.m. next week, and we will have um, some refreshments and some things to do after the service, the flowering of the cross. There'll be hot cross buns, the playground. Um, so can't wait for that. Um, so those are our Holy Week services. Hope that you can join us for as many or all of them, um, if you can. Uh, big announcements uh, coming up. Well, we have... Uh, we had moved the last Intro to St. Bart's class to today, so if you are part of that, uh, we will have an Intro to St. Bart's class um, in room 202 right after the service. Um, if you were here last week, you heard that we announced uh, Dave's sub- upcoming sabbatical this summer, um, and a letter went out to the congregation this week with a little bit more details, and as the weeks unfold, uh, we'll just Dave will uh, speak to what he'll be doing in that time, what he and his family plan to do during that sabbatical time, time of rest. So as you have questions about that, uh, feel free to ask us, ask Dave, but again, more details will be coming on that. And if you just went ahead and archived that letter, deleted it, you can pull it out of your email and read it. Um, It's just a great explanation of why we value this time and why the vestry um, and Dave felt like this was the right time to do this. So that's the sabbatical. um, And that begins on Ascension, that Ascension Sunday will be the Sunday that we pray for him and his family and send him out. And then he'll be back in August, just so you can get a sense of the time, time frame there. Um, we'll have baptisms the Sunday after Easter. So if you are interested or someone you love is interested in being baptized, uh, please register. There's a QR code there. And you can see the rest of the announcements um, as, as needed and slides behind you. Look at that great baptism slide. It's an action photo. Um, <laughs> Now we come to our time of Holy Communion. As Dave said, this is a place where Jesus uh, promises to be with us, to meet us at the table. Um, in light of the passion, it's this amazing gift that God gives us that he entrusts his body to us, to nourish us, to uh, give us his grace. So as you come forward to receive communion, we ask that you place your hands like this uh, to receive the wafer, we will dip the wafer for you in the cup of wine. There'll be three lines, and the ushers will tell you where to go. Um, if you want to receive gluten-free wafer for some reason, you can place your hands like this. Or if you don't want to receive communion for some reason, please still come forward, place your hands like this, and we will pray a prayer of blessing over you. Uh, we also will have um, prayer teams in the back available for you as you finish up communion. Um, if there's any need in your life or anything that was... Uh, came to mind or was put on your heart during the service, our prayer teams would just, they're trained and ready and willing and eager to pray with you uh, and join in intercession. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto Almighty God. deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch's treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns His face away. As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon the cross My sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life 
Is the Father with us? Yes. Is Christ among us? Yes. Is the Spirit here? Yes. This is our God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are His people. We are Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and our delight to give you thanks and praise, great Father, living God, supreme over the world. Creator, provider, savior, and giver. From a wandering nomad, you created your family. For a burdened people, you raised up a leader. For a confused nation, you chose a king. For a rebellious crowd, you sent your prophets. In these last days, you've sent us your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying, rising, and reigning, remaking your people for yourself. Through him you've poured out your Holy Spirit, filling us with light and life. Therefore with angels, archangels, faithful ancestors and all in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. God, owner of all things, we thank you for giving up your only son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us now as we remember him in the way he commanded through these gifts of your creation, who on the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. His body was broken for us. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We are brothers and sisters through his blood. We have died together. We will rise together. We will live together. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us. 
as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our brother Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his offering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high. Amen. Jesus is Lord. This is the feast of victory. The Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Please kneel as together we pray the prayer Christ himself taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ is alive forever. We are because he is. We are one body. We share one body. Draw near with faith. Together, we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. Thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed by his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them, remember that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Soon and very soon, my King is coming, robed in righteousness and crowned with love. When I see Him, I shall be made like Him soon. Soon and 
this Sunday where we have remembered the events that led to your death and where we've now celebrated your resurrection. Come and fill our hearts afresh with hope. Not just hope for tomorrow, but hope for today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Anyone celebrating a birthday today? Blake, did we do you last week? All right. Anyone else? Before I start naming names. All right, there we go. Anyone else? Any birthdays? Yes, Grant, come on down. Fantastic. All right, the rest of you, just <clears throat> put out a hand up front. Let's bless these birthday boys, shall we? Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Come them and discourage the sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may thy peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. You saw Brian flinch. I just want to assure everyone that I, the blessings are powerful, but they do not have the ability to age you prematurely. All right. Let us pray our prayer for mission of the world this week. Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be upon you this day, this week, and forevermore. Amen. Please remain standing for our closing hymn.
peace to love and serve the Lord.